says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Thank you, brother Peter, for watching. Glad to have you here. Thank you. The song is uh, by our brother Larry Tudor. I love him so much because he's uh, proclaiming the gospel of the grace of God alone. So the song is entitled The Gospel of Christ. If you need the song, actually contact our brother Larry Tidwell, is a friend of mine. Thank you very much. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gift of life. Uh, we've just heard from our brother Larry Tudwin in the Gospel of Christ song, the Gospel. It's saying that if we believe in Christ Jesus, we have got eternal life uh, and the forgiveness of sin through his blood. We thank you for giving us, um, for saving us by grace through faith alone in the Gospel of Christ. I thank you for even King James Bible. Right now we want to stand, uh, we want to stand around King James Bible to know uh, from you the very voice of you. We thank you for everything that you've done in our life, especially uh, saving us by grace through faith alone and giving us all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This time around, we want to understand who you are according to revelation of the mystery that was revealed to Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 1. This is my humble prayer this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. Welcome all my fellow believers in Christ. Uh, this is your brother Felix Copio. I'm coming from Kenya. And right now we want to get into the word of truth, the very voice of God. And my topic today is about who is Christ. Uh, I, just want to, I just want to ensure that the body of Christ understand who is Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was given to, uh, to Apostle Paul. All right. In the Bible, we need to understand that Christ has been spoken according to prophecy and according to the mystery. So I'm not going to measure on Christ Jesus according to prophecy, but I just want to measure on Christ Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery that was revealed to Apostle Paul. Allow me to read from the, the book of Romans, chapter six, chapter 16, uh, chapter 16 from verse 
verse 25. Uh, Romans chapter 16 from verse 25. Okay, so we need to understand our glorified uh, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the body of Christ, according to the mystery. So that is what, uh, that what I want to understand, uh, what I want my, my, my fellow believers to understand today. Understanding uh, Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery and also understanding the body of Christ is crucial to us as believers in Christ. Allow me to read from the book of Romans chapter 16 from uh, verse 25, okay? And understand today, God does not speak to us through uh, dreams, vision, extra biblical revelation. God does not communicate to us through, uh, through prophecy or miracle workers or self proclaimed modern day apostles and prophets. Uh, you need to understand that Paul was the last person to have seen Christ. He is the last person that Christ communicated to about everything that we want to know and understand. Amen. So, Romans chapter 16 from verse 25. A glory to God only wise. Okay. Now to him that is of power to, uh, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept uh, secret since the world began. Amen. So Paul, Paul here wants to, uh, is preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was given to him. It means that Paul did not preach the kingdom gospel but he preached uh the gospel of the grace of god to uh to us gentiles having said thus my my fellow believers in christ who is jesus christ uh open with me colossians uh colossians chapter 1 verse uh verse 15 colossians chapter 1 verse 15 we want to understand who is christ to the body of christ amen so then after that we will understand what christ has done to us as believers in christ amen Colossians chapter uh, 1 verse 15, about who is Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or all things were created by him and for him. Amen. When you ask this question to uh, the world religious movement, and you ask everybody who is not saved about who is Jesus Christ, they will tell you a lot of things about Jesus Christ. But understand that when you want to understand who is Christ, you only need to open your King James Bible. You understand how the Holy Ghost through Apostle Paul described Jesus Christ. First of all, we know just we know that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, right? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created. It means that Jesus Christ is God. But when you go to Islamic faith, when you are you go to any world religious movement, they will de uh, they are going to deny this uh, this fact from the Bible perspective. They don't understand. They want to reject. But us, the body of Christ, we understand that Jesus Christ is God, fully God and fully man. Amen. Uh, so we need to understand who is Jesus Christ. He is the Creator. Amen. Thank you. Having said that, my fellow believers in Christ, allow me to make a few points here before we get into Colossians chapter 1. Amen. Where we will get to understand who is Jesus Christ and also to understand the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. So let us uh, make a few points here about, uh, about uh, something I, I, I made during this kind of uh, study. Amen. Understanding the right division of, of God's word. Right? Understanding the right division of God's word. We have the King James Bible. If you don't study the word of God rightly divided, you know how this belongs to the nation of Israel and this belongs to the body of Christ and also this belongs to the Gentiles. If you don't know, then you are going to get confused, frustrated, and also you are going to steal the promises that were given to the nation of Israel. Praise the Lord. So to avoid confusion and frustrated and frustration and des desperation that you can get when you're reading the word of truth, you need to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. The whole Bible is the word of truth. The whole Bible is the word of truth. Some truth to the Bible belongs to the nation of Israel, and some truth belongs to the body of Christ. Amen. So Understanding the right division is very important of God's words. So when we understand the right divisions, we are not going to say that we are spiritual Israel. Amen? Okay. In religion today, you hear all kinds of misinformation that is taught as Bible truth. 
For example, some teach you that uh, uh, some teach you that you have to be water baptized to be saved. A lot of people have taught that that you need to be water baptized to be saved, right? Others teach against this saying water baptism is an outward sign of an inward commitment. Amen. May I say at, at the uh, outset that both of these teachings are dispensationally deficient, right? Then they are the issue of tongues, okay? Healings, tithing, gifts, signs, judgment, communion, forgiveness, atonement, and covenants. Not to mention salvation, justification, redemption, and reconciliation. If you don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth, you will not be able to understand uh, these things and you are going to get confused. Amen? Right. Why is there so much confusion in churches today? In quotes. Why is it that you can drive down any city street and find many, many, many kinds of church buildings? What is the reason for so much division? Amen. There is division because there is very little right division. The confusion is in the churches today stems from an evil root uh, that fails to grab several vital, yeah, uh, imperative Bible truth. Amen. There is confusion because of a failure too. People are confused because they fail to do this. They fail to rightly divide the word of truth according to uh, 2, Corinth, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. That's why you find many, many church buildings and all of them are confused because they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Some claims that they can heal sick people. Some claim that you need to be water baptized in order to be saved. Some claim that the kingdom of God is at hand. They preach a lot of confusion. Uh, to avert this, my fellow believers in Christ, we need to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen? According to how the Bible has given it. So, People are confused. There is total confusion because of a failure to rightly divide the word of truth. Secondly, to acknowledge Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles. If the body of Christ will not acknowledge that Paul is the only apostle sent to them or to the Gentiles, they are going to be having total confusion. They are going to listen to Peter. If you listen to Jesus Christ through prophecy, he was never preaching to you. He was never teaching you. He was never sent to you. Jesus Christ was sent to us according to uh, mystery. That is where the gospel of the grace of God is coming in to save the entire world. If the entire world could believe. Amen. So the reason why there is confusion, they fail to rightly divide the word of truth. They fail. To acknowledge Paul's, uh, Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles. Amen. Thirdly, they fail to recognize the distinctiveness of the church, the body of Christ. Amen. On the other hand, a complete harmony of the scripture takes place when we employ these principles. Amen. When we acknowledge the right division of the word of truth, we have a complete harmony of the scripture. When we acknowledge that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, we will be having the harmony in the scripture. When we recognize the distinctiveness of the church, which is the body of Christ, we will have harmony in the scripture. We will not have total confusion, frustration, and every sort of spiritual uh, uh, confusion, right? Amen. So God is not the author of confusion. When you read your Bible, he is not the author of confusion. Man and Satan are the co-authors of confusion surrounding the word of God today. When you find people are confused, they are confused because of Satan and also because of men who don't rightly divide the word of truth. It is sad to listen to uh, pastors in Kenya. They say that the church belongs to them. Amen. But when we go to the Bible, when we go to Colossians, when we go to uh, the pastoral letters of Apostle Paul, we find that the church belongs to Christ and Christ is the head of the church. Amen. Right. So God is not the author of the confession. The author of the confession in this world today is Satan and man who follow the tactics of Satan. Praise the Lord. Who don't want to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. There is only one way to clear up the confusion caused by trying to make the body of Christ spiritual Israel. 
and that is by following God's plan. Amen. And you know, today God's plan is not to form the nation of Israel. God's plan is not to uh, come uh, to uh, inaugurate the kingdom here on earth. What is the current plan of God today? Amen. The current plan of God today, we need to understand that dispensational application of the word of God and God's man in, the, in this age, the apostle Paul. Amen. We go to Paul to understand what God is doing today. We don't go to Peter. We don't go to uh, Hebrews through Revelation. You find in your King James Bible to understand what God is doing today. You read Romans through Philemon. Amen. You will find that God is forming the church, which is the body of Christ, which is soon be raptured in the air to meet the Lord. Amen. So we will look at the three points above and see what the Bible says, not our opinion, not our interpretation about the body of Christ and Israel today. Shall we? Amen. Are we today in the dispensation of the grace of God, spiritual Israel? No, not in any way. We are not. The body of Christ is a distinct organism. Amen. Designed to be the agency through which God is making his will known today. Again, religion makes at least Three errors in making the body of Christ spiritual Israel today. Let's begin with the, one, with the first one. Amen. Failure number one. Failure to rightly divide the word of truth. Verse 2. Verse, uh, verse uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. Failure to give to Israel what belongs to Israel. And thereby giving to the body of Christ what belongs to the body of Christ result only in confusion. Consider, if you will, for just a moment, several points of contrast between Israel and the body of Christ. Israel had an earthly hope, while the body of Christ has an heavenly hope. We are going to be raptured. Our hope is in heaven where we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to appear, to take us home. So Israel had God, had God an earthly hope. Amen. When you read Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, allow me to read from the King James Bible. And in the days of this king shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other, other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore were come together. They asked of him. Saying. Lord. Wilt thou at this time. Restore again the kingdom to Israel. Listen. The, the hope of Israel. Is the earthly kingdom here on earth. So avoid praying the Lord's prayer. Because the Lord's prayer is prophetic. Uh, it deals with the prophetic about God's coming to integrate the kingdom here on earth called the millennium period. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. Of the, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. To order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. So Acts chapter 2 verse 30. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him. That of the fruit of his lands according to the flesh. He will raise up Jesus to sit on his throne. I'm, I'm, I'm reading about the earthly hope uh, to concerning Israel not to the body of Christ. Amen. Israel was looking for us physical. When, when, Abraham, when, when you can find Abraham and you ask Abraham today, what was your hope? Abraham will tell you, I am looking for a physical, visible, earthly, Davidic kingdom with Christ sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. That is the hope of Abraham and all the hope of the Old Testament saints. Even if you ask Elijah, Elisha, you ask uh, David, you ask Job, you ask Zechariah, you ask Jeremiah, Obadiah, Habakkuk, and the rest, and Amos, and Joel. They will tell you that our hope is a physical, visible, earthly, Davidic kingdom with Christ sitting on throne in Jerusalem. Christ is not, is not yet the king. Amen? Today. Because he's still there in heaven with God the Father. Sitting at the right hand uh, 
forming the church, which is the body of Christ. So allow me to read about the hope of the body of Christ. While the body of Christ has heavenly hope. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. Amen. An house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of all Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, chapter 2 verse 6. And hath raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians, lastly, Colossians chapter 1 verse 5. For the hope which is laid for you in heaven, our hope is laid for us in heaven, not here on earth. Whereof he heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You see, the gospel of Apostle Paul contain our hope, which is laid for us in heaven. So they are, this hope is found when you believe the gospel of the grace of God and when you read and understand the gospel of the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. First Thessalonica uh, 1 verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven. This is what we are waiting for. We are not waiting for this world to become better. Amen. We are waiting for his son from heaven. We are waiting for Jesus Christ from heaven. Whom he raised from the dead. Jesus Christ is in heaven right away. Sitting at the right hand of God the Father. God raised him from the dead. Amen. Even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. We are waiting for him. He is going to deliver us from the wrath to come. The body of Christ is not appointed unto wrath. The body of Christ will not stand before the, the, throne, the white throne judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. The body of Christ will not be here to experience the tribulation and the, uh, and the mark of the beast. Amen. But the body of Christ, Christ has delivered us from the wrath to come. Praise the Lord. The church, the body of Christ has heavenly hope. While the nation of Israel has an earthly hope, this is illustrated in the following verses. Amen? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, the body of Christ, and which are on earth, the nation of Israel, even in him. So Christ has got people in him according to prophecy, and Christ also has got people in him according to, uh, according to the mystery. There is only one of many distinctions arrived at by dispensational application of the scripture. The only method of Bible study by fellow believers in Christ that makes sense. And only one of which God approves. For more distinction, uh, which approve is rightly dividing the word of truth. Failure number two. Failure to acknowledge Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles. Amen. Paul, not Peter, nor any of the rest of the kingdom apostles was the apostle to the Gentiles. I didn't say that. God said that. Amen. God said in the scripture, in the King James Bible, that Paul, not Peter, nor any of the rest of the kingdom apostles were the apostle to the Gentiles. Amen. The sooner organized religion, traditionalist, and denominationalist figure this out the sooner the spiritual Israel phenomenon will disappear open with me Romans chapter 1 verse 1 allow me to read Paul an apostle uh, Paul sorry Paul a servant of Jesus Christ amen called to be an apostle separated unto their gospel of God remember Paul was saved Instead of Jesus Christ destroying Paul on that road to Damascus. Because Paul was persecuting the church of God. That is the little flock. Paul was before blasphemer. Paul was before an injurious man. A persecutor. When Christ met Paul from heavenly places. Amen. Christ descended from heaven and came. 
and, and came and saved Saul of Tarsus. Amen. Listen to what Jesus Christ, instead of killing Saul of Tarsus, did for him. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Today we don't have apostles. Because for you to be an apostle, Christ must have come and, uh, and sent you physically, right? Like he did to Saul of Tarsus. Christ is not coming to make people apostle today. He is forming the church, the body of Christ. Amen? That is what we should understand. We don't have apostle today. All what we hear from people are, uh, those are people uh, embracing extra biblical revelation. Amen? Jesus is not sending any apostle today. He has said Saul of Tarsus and we find every information about the sending of Saul of Tarsus in the King James Bible, Romans through Philemon. So don't call yourself apostle. Don't call yourself a prophet. Don't call yourself a priest. We are not in the priesthood system. We are not in the tithing system. We don't offer sacrifices to God. We don't offer blood sacrifices. Praise the Lord. Christ Jesus was shed his blood on that Calvary's cross for our salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, when you read, uh, Paul is separated unto the gospel of God. This is the gospel of the grace of God. Calling or uh, preaching to the entire world. Romans chapter 11 verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnified mine own office. We don't magnify Paul. We don't worship Paul. Amen. We worship Jesus Christ. Right? We don't magnify Paul. Even Paul did not magnify himself. He magnified his own office. We obey the revelation of the mystery that was sent was given to Apostle Paul. In order to understand Jesus Christ, we need to go to Paul to study the revelation of the mystery. How Christ revealed himself to Saul of Tarsus in his from heavenly glory. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. So. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Galatians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and of the, of the far, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher. Listen, if you need to understand who is your preacher. As the, to the body of Christ. Paul is the preacher of the Gentiles. Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. Paul is a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. Okay. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Can there be any doubt my fellow believers in Christ? Those who desire to be under the law and to place others there to have to do so in the light of the plain teaching of scripture. The 12 tribes of Israel had their 12 apostles. Remember, the 12 tribes of Israel had their 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. The only one body of Christ has got one apostle. When you apply this information to the doctrine of us being spiritual Israel, that doctrines disappear. Allow me to read Matthew chapter 19 verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, unto the twelve disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, that is the throne of David, in Jerusalem physically, he, ye also shall sit Upon 12 throne, judging the tribe of Israel. And that was the reason why Christ had got 12 apostles. These 12 apostles shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribe of Israel. Paul, not the 12, is our pattern today. Our pattern today, my fellow believers in Christ, is Paul. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. This is a faithful saying. And worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all 
long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Amen. So we don't make too much of Paul. We make too much of the revelation of the mystery that was revealed through him. Failure number three, why there is much confusion. Failure to recognize the distinctiveness of the church, the body of Christ. And allow me to read, Israel has been set aside, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles uh, be in, become in. Romans chapter 11 verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Romans chapter 11 verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. 31. Even so have these also have not believed, and that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. 32. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon upon all amen so those who follow paul those who follow paul follow the lord today we love to follow paul those who want to follow paul, those who want to follow christ today if you want to follow christ today my fellow believers in christ you love to follow the apostle paul amen okay Paul writes to the Corinthians and says, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye are not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. You listen. Every member of the body of Christ today were begotten by the gospel that Apostle Paul preached. They believe that gospel. When you believe that gospel, you become part and parcel of the body of Christ. When you believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture for your salvation, you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. You are baptized into the body of Christ. You have got eternal life. You cannot lose your salvation. You become a child of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you. And to know that this person is a child of God, that man has to believe the gospel of the grace of God. If any man if any child, if any girl, if any woman, if any boy will believe the gospel of the grace of God, that person will be immediately baptized into the body of Christ. He will become part and parcel of that body. He will have, be having redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. He will be having peace with God. He will be having his sin justified. Praise the Lord. And he's going to be declared righteous forever. Amen. And it's just waiting for the day of the rapture, the day that he will go, he will be taken, uh, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So if you have not listened to the gospel of the Apostle Paul, if you have not believe, remember, if you die without believing the gospel of the grace of God, you are going to be taken into hell. And there in hell, there is torment, there is suffering. There is pain to your soul and spirit. You can decide today. Jesus bled on that tree, on that cross. He was taken there very early in the morning. At, at 9 a.m., the Son of God was crucified, bled on that cross for your salvation. At, at noon, the darkness of the, the, the total darkness covered the whole land for three, hour, three hours. Christ purchasing your soul. He was reconciling the world unto himself. God, amen. God sent Jesus Christ to come here, died on that cross for your salvation. If you believe today, you are saved and you have got eternal life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, do you know, so for this cause, amen, wherefore, I beseech you, be followers, be ye followers of me. The Bible is telling me to follow Apostle Paul. For this cause, I have sent unto you Timotheus, 
who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. It is unfortunate, my fellow believers in Christ, does the churches today really preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? Walk through all these local church buildings. Amen? Do you know the ways of Paul? If you are in a denominational church, I doubt very seriously that you do. Otherwise, you will not have be there. Amen? So I am preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which most denominational churches do not embrace. So if you are still in a denominational church, you are going to miss the instruction given to Apostle Paul through our recent glorified head of the church, Jesus Christ. Do you follow Paul? He is our, the Gentiles apostle today. In the dispensation of the grace of God, he writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 16, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them, we should there hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. If you will follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you must follow Paul. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 37. If any man thinketh of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. The things Paul wrote were not the suggestion of the Lord. They are the commandments of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me. Even as I also. I am of Christ. Paul got in information. Paul got his information. From. Directly from the reason. Lord Jesus Christ. If you like Christ today. If you like to follow Christ today. You must, you must follow Paul. Amen. Philippians chapter chapter 3 verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have as for us an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of Christ's cross. Paul commands the Philippians to follow him that he was the example. Amen. So, my fellow believers in Christ, let us listen to Paul. In summary, there is one denying, there is no denying uh, the fact that Israel has been set aside and blinded and will remain in that condition until they're catching away of the church, the body of Christ. Second, the body of Christ does not. Remember what the body of Christ does not. The body of Christ does not keep the law of Moses. So any cultic religious movement like Seventh-day Adventists telling you to be under the law to observe the Sabbath, they are lying to you. They are not sent. Jesus Christ did not send, uh, uh, did not send all those cult leaders. Amen? He sent to us Apostle Paul. Listen to Paul. When you listen to Paul, you will find that the body of Christ that knows, does not keep the law of Moses. The body of Christ today does not talk in unknown tongues, avoid Pentecostalism and charismatic movement. The body of Christ does not sell all they have. It happened in Africa here. That a certain man naming himself a prophet and apostle preached that the world is going to end soon. And he enticed the follow his followers to sell everything. That they are waiting for the Lord. What That is very painful. Very sad situation to hear and to see. Amen. So I'm telling you my fellow believers here. We don't sell everything that we have. The body of Christ does not circumcise. The body of Christ does not heal the sick people. Uh -huh. I understand extra biblical revelationists, those people who think that they, they are prophets and apostles. T.D. Jakes, jo Joseph Smith, Amen. Joyce Meyer, Joseph Prince, and Benny Hinn, who came here in Kenya. They think that they can lay their hands on people and get well. No, you will not be well. If you are sick, get to the sick hall. Find proper treatment. Amen. And you will be well. And if you are not, please don't be afraid to join, to be caught, uh, to depart and be with the Lord. Because in the in in being with the Lord is better than being here on this earth, where there is 
uh, curse, where there is suffering, where there is torment. While you are a part of the body of Christ and you are listening to me, we are waiting for the Lord to appear in the air. Meanwhile, we are waiting for the Lord to come. We need to preach the gospel of the grace of God and to, and to edify the saints through the revelation of the mystery that was revealed to Apostle Paul. The body of Christ does not heal the sick. So next time, uh, I, I know before you embrace right division, you used to call people to come and pray for you, to you to get well. Amen. That did not happen at all. They did not heal you. Amen. At all. There is no power within their hands to heal you. Amen. So the body of Christ does not raise the dead. The body of Christ does not look for signs. Don't look into Middle East, what is happening to the Israel. In fact, what took place in Israel is in 1944. Amen. That was, pro, uh, that was stage manage. It is propaganda. It is political propaganda. It was, it was not God fulfilling the prophecy. No. No prophecy is being fulfilled today. Amen. We don't look for signs. We are not looking for the Antichrist. We are not looking for the, uh, the beast, the mark of the beast. We are not looking for the tribulation. We are looking for the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ to take us home. Amen. So the body of Christ does not get physical curses for doing evil. The body of Christ does not get physical blessing for doing good. The body of Christ does not collect the tithe. We are not under tithing system. The body of Christ does not do water baptism. The body of Christ does not look for the new Jerusalem. Proclaim and preach by John Hagee. They are preaching kingdom prophetic program. That is not our program. Our program is heaven. We don't look for the new Jerusalem to come here. Uh, Paul did not have hope in Jerusalem coming here. He had the hope of being captured, uh, being raptured to be taken, uh, to be taken in heavenly places or to be changed. Amen. So the body of Christ does not work for salvation. We don't work for salvation. The body of Christ does not endure to the end. We don't go into the tribulation. And lastly, we don't cast out devils. Amen. All these things belong to the nation of Israel. However, the body of Christ, allow me to share with you what the body of Christ has. The body of Christ has all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. The body of Christ has an heavenly hope. The body of Christ has an eternal life by grace through faith. The body of Christ will not go through the wrath to come. The body of Christ will get a personal escort of this earth by the Son of God himself. The body of Christ does preach the gospel of the grace of God. The body of Christ has a personal instant access to God apart from a priest. The body of Christ is complete in Christ. The body of Christ is secure in Christ, is baptized in Christ, is circumcised in Christ, is dead with Christ, is risen with Christ, is alive in Christ, will rule in the heavens with, in, in the heavens with Christ, has got a victory over sin right now. Amen? So, these things that relate only to the church, the body of Christ, and this is a quick random sampling. You can, study your, you can study King James Bible to understand more about the church, the body of Christ. Amen? We cannot be spiritual Israel simply because God has a, pro, a prophesied program for them that will be accomplished out in the ages to come. It is a visible, physical, earthly, divided kingdom with Christ sitting in his, uh, in, on his throne in Jerusalem. The body of Christ has the task of be, being God's agency today. Proclaiming salvation by grace through faith based on the finished cross work of Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. At the end of this age, the body of Christ will be caught up to heaven to rule and reign there. Two separate programs, two separate message, messages, and two separate sphere of influence. Our apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, writing the dispensation of the grace of God, is our pattern. We follow him. As we have been directed, all confusion disappear when we follow God's minds and God's message in God's time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Open, uh, open your, uh, your King James Bible. Colossians chapter 1. 
Amen. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 1. Amen. I was giving the introduction. I was also giving the uh, the uh, the eye view of the old scripture pertaining to the distinction between the body of Christ and the and the nation of Israel. So allow me to read from the King James Bible, Colossians chapter one. Amen. Colossians chapter one. In Colossians chapter one, we will find that Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by grace, ah, sorry, for by Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions. Amen. Bible tells me so that Christ is the creator. He's God. He came here. Amen. He manifested in human flesh for the, uh, for the cross work. Amen. So even if the Muhammad disagree with me, I don't read the Quran. I don't read the book of Mammon. I don't read the article written by Confucius. I only read the King James Bible, which is inspired, authoritative, and without error. Please, don't listen to Muhammad. Don't listen to Buddha. Don't listen to Confucius. Don't listen to any self-modern-day proclaim apostles and prophets. Listen to Apostle Paul. Amen? And you are going to be blessed. Okay, Colossians chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1. Right. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 1. If time allows, uh, I, will, I will read up to verse 17. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy as our brother. Amen. In verse 1, we find Paul. Who was saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And there he began. God began forming something new. That was never prophesied. He began what is called. The body of Christ. Amen. Where there is the believing Gentiles and believing Jews. Are joined together to be joint heirs. Of God. Amen. So he is the apostle of Jesus Christ. Today if you want to get the apostle of Jesus Christ. Open your King James Bible, you will find them, you will find Paul there. And his appointmentship was not by the will of man, but the will of God. And Timothy as our brother. Timothy, Paul is calling Timothy his brother. Amen. He's not calling Timothy an apostle. I will not call you an apostle. I will not call you a prophet, right? I will not call you a priest. But if you are saved and you are in the body of Christ, and you believe the gospel of the grace of God. And you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. And you have got the righteousness of Christ imputed onto your account. I will call you my brother. Amen. To the saints. Listen. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. This is now the description of the church. The body of Christ. We are saints. We are separated unto God. We belong to God. All unbelievers do not belong to God. They belong to Satan. And if all unbelievers dies today, they will find themselves in hell. And they will be raised up to stand before the white throne of judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. We are saved, right? Because we belong to God. When we believe the gospel of the grace of God, we were baptized into the body of Christ. And that is how we, be, we, we, be, we became God's children. By faith, through, uh, by faith, by grace, through faith alone, we were saved and we became part of God's family. And God's family now, which we are part of, is heavenly family. Paul included. Amen. You are not defiled. You are not unclean. Listen to how Paul described the body of Christ through the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is saying to the saints. He is not saying to the sinners. Amen. We are not sinners. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you why we are not sinners. Those who are sinners are still in Adam. They are the children of disobedience. And the wrath of God is still on, upon them. The only solution to their, so, uh, to their dilemma is to believe the gospel of the grace of God. Okay. Many people will tell me, Brother Felix, you say it. We are not sinners. But what if I sin? If you sin, God does not impute that sin onto your account. 
He did that on Jesus Christ. And you receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Today, if you are a believer in Christ, you are called a saint. When I read many, 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 many articles from the, uh, from the Facebook and these people, it is paining me to find that a believer in Christ, who Christ died for, who believed the gospel of the grace of God, is calling himself a sinner. That man do not understand Paul. Paul did not say that when we, as the body of Christ, when we sin, we are sinners. Paul did not say that. Amen. But instead, Paul said to the saints, we belong to God. And when Jesus Christ will appear, he will take us home. That process called the rapture. Remember, those, who, those people who have got the spirit of God that indwells them, these people belong to God. Amen. All unbelievers do not belong to God. But we, as the body of Christ, we belong to God and the Holy Spirit of God bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God indeed. So you are a saint. Amen. You are not a sinner. Okay, you are not a saint because you did something. No. You are a saint because you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are taken out of Adam and placed into the body of Christ. Where there is no where, where, where there is forgiveness of sin, where there is redemption, where there is justification, where there is peace with God, where there is all the uh, righteousness of God. Amen. So you are a saint. And faithful brethren. So. You are saved because. Of faith. You have faith in what Christ did. That was the basis of your salvation. You believe that Jesus Christ died. Was buried and rose again the third day. According to the scripture for your sins. You are saved on that basis alone. So we have people. We have saints and the, uh, and the faithful brethren. So the body of Christ. Saint. And the faithful brethren. Amen. In Christ. Which are at Colossae. Okay. Grace be unto you. And peace. From God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to identify two things here. First of all. We have grace. Be unto who? Be unto the saint and faithful in Christ. Grace of God. Those people who are saved. They are under the grace of God. They are not under the law. Amen. So that's why Paul is saying, is, is greeting them, grace be unto you. Paul is reminding them that only it was by grace through faith alone that they got their salvation. It was by grace that they had got a relationship with God. Grace be unto you and peace with God. From God. So, right? So we need to understand that grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and be and the Lord Jesus Christ to the body of Christ. Amen. So when we are, when we find grace, grace is used in a number of different ways in this new in the New Testament. It can refer to one God's unmerited kindness on Calvary, which brings about man's salvation. When you read uh, Ephesians chapter two verse eight. Number two, the state of grace in which the believer stands. We are standing under grace. We are not standing under the law where there was no liberty. Under grace, there is liberty. Under grace, we stand justified. Amen? So, the state of grace in which the believer stands, that is, is being in God, God's favor. Romans chapter 5 verse 2. Allow me to read. Romans chapter 5 verse 2. My fellow believers in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. By whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God. So it is a standing position. Amen. So. Number three, an, an, an unusual blessings produced by divine grace, gracious or attractiveness, and grace can as here mean God's stored up help dispensed to his people in times of need. 
Number two, peace. Peace also employed in the variety of ways in scripture. It can signify the opposite of war. Under grace dispensation period, God does not punish any person. In fact, today, God does not punish the entire world. No. When there is catastrophe, when there is calamity, where there is earthquake and tsunami, when there is flood everywhere, like we see flood in Kenya, that is not a punishment from God. There is nothing that God is punishing us uh, 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 with. Amen? God is not using the flood that is currently in Kenya to punish us. Because we are under grace dispensation period. During this time or period, God does not impute the, the world's sin onto themselves. But God is, pre, God is trying to reconcile the whole world onto himself by believing the gospel of the grace of God. So peace here means the, uh, the absence of war between us and God. God does not deal with us with war, punishment, and wrath. We have peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Number two, harmony and concord with others. Health and welfare. Salvation in that one is at peace with God. We have peace with God. As in this verse. Peace sometimes denote uh, uh, peace of mind. That frees the Christian from fear and anxiety. Amen. Uh, number three, uh, verse three. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by praying always for you. We give thanks to God because he saved us by grace through faith alone. He indwells us with the Holy Spirit. He baptizes us into the body, the, the church, the body of Christ. He, he, we find forgiveness of sin. Amen. We have got all, we have got eternal life. Our sins have been dealt with, past, present, and future. Amen? Praise the Lord. Right. So, uh, for the hope, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and the love which ye, all, ye, uh, ye have to all the saints, the believer in Christ, the church, the body of Christ, has, has, has faith in Christ. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Amen? So, hope is salvation. As it is referred to the object of the which one hopes, word of the truth of the gospel, could be rendered as the message of the gospel which is true. Amen? So, we need to understand that through that gospel, we have got the hope. Right. Uh, verse 6. Which is come unto you. As it is in all the world. And bringeth forth fruit. As it is doeth also in you. Since the day we ye heard of it. And knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras. Our dear brother, fellow servant. Who is for you in faithful minister of Christ. Who also declared unto you, unto us, your love in the spirit. For this cause, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that she might be full with the knowledge of, of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That is the prayer that we should be praying for today. And that is the will that uh, our desire that first, that the body of Christ might be, full, uh, might be filled with the knowledge of his will. We need to understand the knowledge of the will of God today. What is the will of God today? Amen. The will of God today is to save mankind. And them that are saved come into the knowledge of the truth. That is the will of God. The will of God today is not prosperity today. The will of God is not to heal you today. But the will of God is... To save you. Amen. To save you from your sin. To save you from the wrath to come. And to make you to be a child of God. Right. And to forgive of all your sins. 
past, present, and future. And to give you peace. And to justify you when you believe the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. That is the will of God today. So when you want to know the will of God today in your life. If you are a believer in Christ, the will of God today in your life is to know the knowledge of his will. That is found in Romans through Philemon. To understand him. Amen. To know who is Christ. And to know who are you in him. Amen. Right. That she might walk worthy of the Lord. So after knowing the knowledge of his will in the scripture. We don't know the will of God through prayer and fasting. And engaging into ascetic life or mysticism or ecumenical movement. We don't know the will of God by prayer or fasting. But how do we know the will of God? When we read King James Bible to understand what God is doing today in Romans through Philemon. We are going, we are going to find the will of God today. And the will of God today is to all man save and, and come to the knowledge of the truth. And knowing what God is doing today is very important. He is not resurrecting the dead today. He is not healing people today. That's why we are sick. And soon if the Lord does not come, we are going to, uh, we are going to die and decompose. Amen. Right? But our soul and spirit at, at the point of death is taken up to third heaven. To be in the presence of the almighty God. Right? Waiting for the day of the redemption. That is the redemption of our body. Right now, we are redeemed soul and spirit. What is remaining, my fellow believers in Christ, to be redeemed is our glorification. The day that our, we will be glorified. The day that we will be changed. The day that we will be resurrected and given that eternal, the tabernacle in heaven. Amen? Right? So the will of God today, if you are a believer in Christ, is to uh, preach the gospel of the grace of God. Make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. And preach from the King James Bible, rightly divided. Right? Okay. <clears throat> if we know the will of God today, found in the Romans through Philemon, first of all, that will of God will make us walk, make us walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God. That is what a person, what a believer in Christ should desire. Increasing in the knowledge of God. How do we increase in the knowledge of God? We read our King James Bible. Amen. The knowledge of God is not through prayer. For, uh, matter of fact, praying is not what you wish to do. Pray is reading and understanding what you've read. Then you communicate it back to God. You cannot pray unless you understand what God is doing today. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if we have known the will of the Lord that God is doing today and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, we will be walking worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joy, joyfulness. Amen. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saint in light. Verse 13 to 15. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Listen to what Jesus Christ, what God the Father has done. I understand you are sick. He has not healed your body. But he has redeemed your soul and spirit. You cannot see them. You cannot feel. You cannot taste it. You cannot see it with your naked eyes. But we see them. By faith. When reading the scripture. When we read the scripture. We find what God has done to us. First. Amen. Giving thanks unto the father. Which had made us. Me to partake us. Of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. See what Christ has done. See what the father has done. In whom? In Christ. In the kingdom of his dear son. That is Jesus Christ. In Christ in whom we have redemption. 
we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So how did we get our redemption? Through the blood of Christ, not through prayer, not through fasting, not through kneeling down, not through calling God, not through raising up your hands. We got our salvation <clears throat> through the blood of Jesus Christ. He bled on that cross. He was buried and he rose again for our justification. Amen. That is where we got our redemption. We were purchased by the blood of God. Jesus Christ. We received his life. He received the penalty of our sin. He died. Then we are made alive. He is resurrected. Then we are made to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Just as Christ died. We all died to sin. And we are alive unto God. Amen. <clears throat> in whom we have redemption. So the redemption is in, in, in the blood of Christ. Maybe you are watching me. And you are not saved. And you want to be saved. Paul is declaring today. He is our pattern and apostle. He's saying, in Christ, we have got redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Maybe you are a sinner. You are not worse than Paul. Maybe you are unrighteous. Amen. Maybe you have not, you've not believed the gospel of the grace of God. And you want to get eternal life. How do you receive eternal life? By grace, through faith alone, in Christ alone, you receive the total forgiveness of your sin. Amen? Right? If you want to be saved, just believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture for your salvation. You are saved, sealed until the day of redemption. You will, uh, you will have the Holy Spirit. You are baptized into the body of Christ. Amen? As I finish this, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, do, uh, and invisible. Whether they be thrones or do, dominions or principalities or powers, all things that are, were created by him and for him. Amen. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first fruit, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father, that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to, unto himself. By him I say it, whether they be things in heaven or things on earth. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for allowing us to stand uh, around the seat around the King James Bible to discuss the very voice of you. In that uh, simple crosswalk of Jesus Christ at Calvary, we were saved, sealed, until the day of redemption. Uh, bless my listener, them that wants to be saved. Please, Father Lord, allow, give them the room that they need to hear the gospel of the grace of God, and they are saved. This is my humble prayer this time in Kenya. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. Welcome us. Thank you, my fellow believers in Christ. See you next time. Grace and peace. I love you. Till Until next time. Bye for now. Thank you.